from Maryland with a 23rd ranked Boilermakers of Purdue have come on the road to take on number 17, 20 and two, the Maryland Terps. Purdue's got a lot of weapons, makes it a challenge for Maryland, but it all starts, I think, with a guy who you could argue is having the best year of any individual in college hoops, Caleb Swanigan. Yeah, he's a first-team All-American. Caleb Swanigan is a double-double guy. He's not afraid to go get 20 rebounds in a game on top of 20-plus points. And the great thing about Purdue is they'll keep throwing it into him. They never, ever during the course of a game forget about him. You know, sometimes teams will get away from their strength. Purdue doesn't. They'll throw it to him. They'll throw it to the other big guy, Haas. But that's the guy that delivers. Huge game in the Big Ten. It's rocking here in Maryland. Terry Bryan and Lewis are officials for this one. And even with the noon local tip on a Saturday morning, really, it is jumping inside the Xfinity Center. The students, a couple of them we talked to, slept in their car outside. A number of them did. And they sell beer in here, so this place is hopping. Now Maryland has the ball first, and Anthony Cowan, one of those freshmen. Trimble takes the first shot of the game. Demonte Dodd with the offensive rebound and draws a foul. You know, it's interesting. The thing to watch defensively for Purdue, two things. Number one, where number 31, Matthias, is. He's maybe the best defender in the Big Ten. The second thing is how do you play the high ball screen if you're Purdue? That time, the high ball screen was set by Dodd, and Swanigan did not come out. Swanigan played it like Wisconsin, a little bit of center field. That's what you have to play when and if you're going to beat Maryland. You've got to stop the middle high ball screen with Mellow Trimble. Well, foul trouble. Purdue's got depth inside with both Swanigan and Isaac Haas. We'll see a lot of the other Purdue big man. Maryland doesn't have quite as much quality depth if somehow those Terps big men can play even close to evenly. I think that gives Maryland a big advantage. Oh, there's no question. Now, on this end, you've got to figure out how you're going to play the post because this is going to go into the post all day long to Swanigan or Haas. Edwards, that's Carson Edwards. I don't know why he didn't just shoot the layup. It looked like he had it right on the bucket. Don't overthink it, people. Well, Mark Turgeon, I think he's kept it pretty simple for his young team. I, he's one of the candidates for Coach of the Year in the country. In the country, absolutely, Dave. I mean, people talk about him Coach of the Year in the Big Ten. He and Chris Collins, no question. Justin Jackson has been red hot from three. Nine of 12. Nine of 13, excuse me, in two road games. One was a fierce road game at Minnesota. The other, kind of a tough road game at Ohio State, but Jackson has been unbelievable. Now the big man, Biggie Swanigan, can shoot threes. Missed that one. Yeah, he can shoot them, but you, if you're Maryland, you want him out there all day. You actually kind of hope he makes. Anthony Cowan, another Terps freshman, missed that jumper. Let, let me clean that up. You, you, you don't mind Swanigan making his first one because then he might stay out there. Edwards draws a foul. Well, the Purdue head coach, Matt Painter, in his 12th year with the Boilermakers. Now, they've had success year after year. NCAA tournament success the last few years has been a little more elusive. And I think for Purdue, the goal is Big Ten championship, but also then let's take a little deeper run with a very talented roster. Yeah, Arkansas Little Rock got them last year. Two years ago, they were playing well at the end and had a nice lead late against Cincinnati and blew it. I think Matt feels like this team is the kind of team that can make a run. You know, here's what I like about Purdue, Dave. After the loss to Nebraska, my people, my spies tell me Matt Painter went old school Bob Knight, Gene Cady. Like, tough practices, everything was nasty. And they responded by just blasting Northwestern. I mean, and, and that says something about the culture of Purdue and the players' respect for Coach Painter and the way he's going to go about it, no matter how he goes about it. I mean, Northwestern came into that game this week ranked one of the hottest teams in the Big Ten. Here's Kevin Herter for three. We've seen enough of him to know. He, he doesn't look like it, but he is it, people. This is a baller, Herter, both ends. So Maryland making shots from the outside early. Purdue makes a lot of outside shots, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. But Matthias missed that one. Trimble goes right by P.J. Thompson and then missed the shot. Another offensive board for Don. 
And Dodd has been a godsend. Hurt for most of the year, has come in and on both ends. He's terrific in clogging things up defensively. He knows where to go, and you see what he's been able to do offensively, particularly on the glass. Vincent Edwards for three. Again, a miss for Purdue. Swanigan has not touched it on the block. We're two and a half in. That seems like a mistake. <laughs> yes. Dodd from the free throw area. That gets you down nine to two. You don't throw it into him. He's got to have it on the block here at some point in this possession. There you go. He gets a touchdown low and then traveled. Yeah, he did too. And again, that was Don. Don didn't do anything but just be big. Like you and I have said, Don is just big. Like he's big through the chest and he you have to you feel like you have to make moves around him, and that time Swanigan just did it too fast. Yeah, I mean, just because Devontae Dodd is not a real polished offensive player, he's got a lot of value for Maryland. Oh, he's got huge value. See, if he was, he would have stepped in right there on Swanigan. Trimble, shot clock winding down. Here's Dodd. He's getting a lot of chances early. The reason is the penetration by Maryland. What a start for the Terps. Okay, you say this is a big test for Maryland. So far, all A's. That's DeMonte Dodd right here. He's the beneficiary of guys not settling. Trimble could have settled. You see Swanigan goes to help. Dodd just follows it in, knocks it out. Pretty good move now, Matt Painter, getting Haas into the game. So Haas in and the superstar Swanigan on the bench in the first few minutes. Haas, who's one of the most physically imposing players in all of college basketball. Draws a foul down low. Dodd trying to play post defense. Yeah, I don't know what else Dodd was supposed to do. Uh, Terry Weimer's good official. I assume that Dodd grabbed him, but man, Haas was working it. At home, don't watch the ball this possession. Just watch how Haas works and pivots when he realizes the ball may go from wing to top of the key trying to get a high low. It's, it's as good as you can do. He's 7'2", 290, wears size 22s. He's got mitts that can catch the ball down low, and he also can get his shot blocked. Michael Tchaikovsky is in for the first time. Got a piece of that one. Here's Carson Edwards. Haas. Oh, man. A foul on Tchaikovsky. <laughs> I was watching them. Hey, look, that could have been a foul on Tchaikovsky. But what a pain it is to battle with Haas. Watch his right arm here. Watch Haas. Boom. I don't know how that's on. Tchaikovsky was just trying to hang on for dear life. It, it, it almost playing Isaac Haas is a test of endurance yes. and will. How long can you hang in there against the big guy? Yeah, and make sure you get in a hot tub after or a cold tub because he's going to hurt you yeah. without even trying. How about Purdue, one of the hottest shooting teams in the country these last few games. They are not hot early. Tchaikovsky missed the layup, missed his follow. Got to finish that one. And that's not Tchaikovsky, that's Bender, who just checked in for Tchaikovsky. Yvonne Bender lost Haas down low. There's the layup. Yeah, that's just easy. That's where Purdue has to go. You can just throw it up off a little penetration. So how do you stop that? You stop that by not, by keeping your man in front of you, by not needing help. If you need help from Haas's man, it's over. Good tip deflection by Edwards to Vince Edwards. Out of the open, and then he threw it to Mello Trimble. Cowan, wide open three. No. That was all he could do because Haas was back on defense sitting under the bucket. I think Purdue needs to go to Haas and Swanigan in this game together. Edwards from that elbow area. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Edwards is a really willing guy. Some people criticize him for being wild. I think his wildness is exactly what Purdue needs. Or maybe it's not wildness, his willingness to step outside the offense. He's averaging better than 10 points a game. Freshman from Atascocita, to Texas. Good defense by Matthias. Bender did not want to shoot it. Trimble does. Misses. Purdue got lucky there. There's no reason for P.J. Thompson to help off Trimble onto Bender. There's Edwards again, the freshman. Everybody was occupied with their man. I was watching Trimble. He was staying with Thompson. No help. Cowan got whipped. Not the best sequence for Yvonne Bender the last couple minutes on both ends. 
kind of working his way a little closer to the basket. Haas maybe impacted that shot. 6-0 run for Purdue, trying to add to that. Vincent Edwards. Haas tipped it right to Cowan. Yeah, good block out that time by Bender. And to end action. We haven't had a stoppage in a while. Cowan scores with a foul. Well, they did it to Cowan on one end. So Cowan bided his time, settled for threes, or three and a jumper the last two times, said to heck with this. Comes down a little slow. Carson Edwards relaxes, Cowan accelerates. Chin on the rim for two. Big time. Anthony Cowan at the free throw line. Caleb Swanigan, who checked out of the game just a couple minutes in, is back in for Purdue. And what you suggested, the two big men in at the same time, Haas and Swanigan. Well, I thought that Purdue, in both the Minnesota loss and the Nebraska loss, made a mistake by taking Swanigan, or excuse me, by letting Swanigan just stay on the block and Haas sitting on the bench. I, I think the combination of the two going high-low with Swanigan you know, at the top of the key isn't bad action. Ball's still going to go on the block. Ball's still going to have the same opportunity. It's just straight eye low, dump it down. Well, that's exactly what that was, but Haas came up short. You know, it was really good defense by Dodd. Dodd did not let Haas get one more step. Haas wanted one step deeper, and Dodd wouldn't let him. Maryland bringing in some of their bench players. Brantley, Gill. Dickens also in. Nickens, a rare two. He doesn't shoot many of those. And he looked comfortable doing it right there. Dodd is so smart. Dodd got it on the block, wasn't going to do anything, so he dribbled it out, handed it off, and on the handoff set a ball screen, and Nickens took advantage. Ryan Klein, good shooter, off the bench for Purdue. Here's Swan again. This is not easy for Gill. Basket with a foul. Yeah, you've got to figure out right now how you're going to handle this. Here's the, here's the dilemma. Klein, Edwards, and Thompson can all shoot. If you go from big to big, then you're just going to throw it up to Haas. That's why I say this is you can get the same thing done three around two with either guy, one on one block and one on the other, and you get much better offense than having a spread motion deal. Swan again. The numbers are just awesome for a kid who's transformed his body, transformed his game, and turned into one of the best players in college hoops. Well, I think he's a first-team All-American. I don't really think there's any doubt about that. Brantley passed up a potential three. Mello Trimble, the lob, and Gill finishes. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to have to guard that high ball screen. Again, same thing. That time, Haas stayed back. They played center field. Trimble attacked, drew help, found the next. Down low, Swan again. This time a double team comes. That left Haas, who traveled. Well, I like it. You, you cannot play one way against Swan again and Haas. But lucky on this, that's what you're going to have to play, a high ball screen. Swan again over helps. Gill sneaks in behind, tremendous pass. I'm telling you, he gets sloppy once in a while, but nobody sees things better than Mello Trimble off the high ball screen. Brantley, a little hesitation. He bounced it right to Swanigan. He thought Dodd was rolling to the rim. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't go where a player thinks. You got to go where you got to throw it where a player is. Again, that double team quickly. Matthias baseline. Nice. He's so good. Well, he's the Matthias. difference in Purdue. He shoots it, he's confident, he'll guard any position other than the post. Dakota Mathias, I think, is a defensive player of the year in the league right now. Defensive player of the year. Yeah, he's held so many guys. Look, he held Vic Law to no baskets, none, the other night against Northwestern. He has guarded the best player, Peter Jock. He dominated Peter Jock uh, of Iowa in the first meeting here at Purdue. P.J. Thompson used the screen, and the long three just will carry him out of bounds and send us to a timeout. So defensive player of the year, maybe Matthias. Player of the year, I think the leader is Caleb Swanigan. The one thing when you talk to everybody, and I mean everybody on the Purdue staff, is Caleb Swanigan works unbelievably hard at his game and is unbelievably diligent at his diet. Caleb Swanigan has transformed his body, and good for him. He is a first-team All-American. There's a ton of NBA guys here, and good for Roosevelt Barnes. A kid who has been given an opportunity but has totally taken advantage of it, and he does deserve a lot of credit for that.
you know, for, for any age, it's not the easiest thing to, to lose weight. I don't, you know, people say, well, you're an athlete, you're running. Yeah. But you have to, like anybody else, stay with it. And he is an incredible worker. And he has been nothing but perfect for Purdue. And Purdue has been perfect for him, quite frankly. Well, the Boilermakers, their start today in this game, not perfect. But here they are, down just five with the ball, nearing the midway point of the first half. Vincent Edwards, challenged by Dodd and swatted. Well, tonight in the SEC, good one. Kentucky on the road to take on a hot Florida team. That's eight versus 24. I think a little more even of those rankings would indicate 8:15 Eastern on ESPN and stream live. Florida went on the road last week, won two games by over 30. I mean, Florida is a legit team. Mike White, tremendous basketball coach. I think the Gators don't get them tonight. I think they will too. Down low, Swanigan, shot clock goes off. He didn't realize it. I'm looking out on the court, and you've got P.J. Thompson with the ball late. And good for P.J. Thompson, who I think has been a fantastic leader as well. He looked at Swanigan's hands by fault. It is his fault. He's responsible, particularly when the ball goes in his hands. And can I give the student section here for the reverse? Usually they count it down early. This time, as it was at three, they were still saying eight. Seven, six. It's pretty good by these guys. May help force a turnover. You're right. Callen did well to get that pass to Brantley. And that one blocked by Matthias, Dan's defensive player of the year. Let's see if we can hear what happened on the other end. And they all patted themselves on the back. They were taking credit. They were. <laughs> It is unbelievable. Here's Maryland, 20 and 2. Number six. This is the best start in school history. Think about all the great teams Maryland has had. This is the second game since the winter break where the students have been here for a Terps home game. They played Rutgers at home with the students here. Uh, they, these kids are just dying for some college hoops. And they're getting it. You know what I mean? I mean they're getting it from local kids as well. Matthias to the basket. Hey, he, you know, we talked about Swanigan changing his body. Matthias changed his as well. Matthias, much sleeker, much quicker, always patient, and always a good shooter. Well, Purdue has calmed this game down. Part of it is at the defensive end. Let's see if they can get Jackson a look. Cowan instead from the elbow. Nice. That's what happens. At, at that, again, I'm beating a dead horse, but you have to be able to guard that. And playing center field the way Swanigan has been playing, it's got to change. They got to come out and hedge it. They got to try to double it. They can't play it that way. Swanigan working his way down low, out of bounds off of Caleb Swanigan. That's straight from Nebraska. Nebraska was able to body up, get real physical, and Swanigan turned it over. That's exactly what Nebraska did late in the game. Now watch. Here's a body right there. And don't give ground. Stay right there. Lean in. And Swanigan struggles with that. The last few minutes of that Nebraska loss for Purdue were not pretty. No, from him, from, from the best player on the court. Matthias almost stole it away, out of bounds off of Purdue. Five-point lead for the Terps. Dave, can I ask you a question? Yes. We, we've done Maryland. How good do you think Maryland is? I think they are at least the 17th-ranked team in the country, probably better. Yeah. I do. Yeah, we've heard a lot this week, and some, uh, I'm not criticizing him. There's Herder, that was a tough three on our own air. Who questioned, hey, Maryland, they haven't played a ranked team, schedule's no good, they're not really as good as the record would say. I've been really impressed. Me too. Edwards against Jackson. Up and under. That was pretty good defense. Really good defense and a terrific block out by Checo. And the freshmen are leading the way with this lineup out there from Maryland. No mellow Trimble. Nickens three. In and out. Offensive rebound. Chance for Jackson. Couldn't quite secure it. Here's Edwards. He's looked very solid in the first half. You cannot let him get to the free throw line. You, you cannot let him get into the middle of the lane. When Carson Edwards gets it in the middle of the lane, 
He is so poised for a guy that isn't taller than six feet tall. That's going to be an offensive foul and a Maryland turnover. So Purdue and Maryland going to head to head on this Saturday in a very big Big Ten game. Maryland with the 20 to 17 lead. We'll keep you updated on everything that's going on around college hoops. In terms of a balanced offensive team so far today, though, their leading scorer has the goose egg. Melo Trimble has not scored yet. And the guy is hot as heck, Justin Jackson, with one shot. 12 minutes into the game, and that's Purdue. They'll get on top of scores and make it very difficult. Bender in for Maryland, and he's the guy who has to defend Swan again. Albrecht, Spike Albrecht missed the jumper. A Terps ball. With the three-point lead. Nice. Backdoor move, Melo Trimble. That's great scouting by the staff. As I said, Purdue will play on top of scores. They were on top of Trimble. He just set up, changed direction, use it against him. Swanigan picked up the dribble, now gets it right back. And you figure this is a mismatch in favor of Purdue. Swanigan just going wherever he wants to go, but missed the shot. And because he was going away from the bucket, he wasn't turning with his shoulders towards the bucket. Trimble, no look pass. He's the best passer on I'm telling you, the center field they're playing. You got to change it up against Trimble. You can't play any one way. You've got to come out and double. You've got to come out and hedge. You've got to come out, trap, whatever. Swanigan hits the three. It's pretty nice. Beautiful. Just came to the top of the key. That's his, that's his spot. Now, remember, this is a guy that's 24 48 from the three point line. He, he is a. Volume shooter, enough of volume to know. Trimble kind of knocked off balance and he finished the shot anyway. Where did he make it from? Middle of the floor. Got to get him out of there. You got to do something, Purdue. Down low, Swanigan again. Quick move with the foul. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, let's look at Mello Trimble. We said he wasn't getting anything done. He's right here. A lot of ways to score. Matthias jumps on top, Trimble goes back door. Guy plays you high, go low. Guy plays you low, go high. Pretty simple basketball. And then this is nice, no look, a little floater. Caught looking, caught standing with Swan again. And then here again, caught up in the air just a little bit. That's a shot, modern day college hoops as a guard. You have to have that little floater if you want to play. Swan again completes the three point play. Bender back to the bench for Maryland. Dodd back in. They're using their big men in short little bursts to try to combat the size and strength of Purdue. Wouldn't be surprised to see Maryland go zone here. Well, we'll see. And Purdue has the ball. Trimble, meanwhile, up top, Cowan. No double dribble. Finds Dodd. Blocked from behind, but they call the foul. Dodd will go to the free throw line. Our Saturday primetime game in the NBA presented by Verizon Wireless on ABC at 8.30 Eastern. Tonight, LeBron James on the big stage at Madison Square Garden. I'm for Porzingis in the Knicks. I'm for both Barkley and LeBron. You I are. Think, I think Barkley was right, and I think LeBron was right in coming back at him. So both of them were right. It's rare. Plus, if, uh, if LeBron and the Cavs want to feel a little bit better about themselves, just take a look at the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> the Knicks are oh, a mess. Knicks and the Bulls. Two flagship franchises that right now are having some problems. The Lakers aren't exactly great. No, they've played better in their history <laughs> in these last few years. Hey, but how about Yogi Ferrell? Yogi Ferrell with 32 last night. I think he's got a job for the rest for the of the Mavericks. year, don't you? Yeah, the Mavericks, I think they signed him to a two-year deal. <laughs> After one game, Matthias for three. You know, Matthias, again, he has extended his range. He has gotten stronger, quicker, and he's just a tremendous two-way player. Cowan weaving his way in traffic. That was a difficult shot. Well, Purdue's got a chance to take the lead. Carson Edwards pulls up. No. That's a bad shot. You got the two big guys in there. Swanigan had run the floor. He hadn't made a shot. Look at Trimble. Jackson for three. Way too strong. You knew that was coming. Nobody stays that hot. I say it all the time. Water finds its level. Nine for 13 isn't going to stay. Actually, it was 10 for 14 in his first one. He was wide open there. Haas with the double team. And through a dangerous pass, Thompson caught it. 
comes up short. Good rebound and outlet to Herter. Kevin Herter kind of wildly flings one up. I don't know about that one. How good a defense was that by Matthias? Just showed his hands. And Matthias stepped out of bounds. Uh, speech. <laughs> that somebody could do that. Watch this. He gets back on defense. He sprints back, gets his head under the backboard. All right, now he comes out to play defense. Look at his hands. He's showing them, and he just stays in front. It's amazing if you can keep a guy in front. So you do that that well on that end, and then come down to this end. And, <laughs> and you run out of bounds. Just run out of bounds. Trimble. Up top, Todd couldn't quite catch it. That'll go down as a turnover. Got to go inside. You got Jackson trying to guard Swan again. Here's Haas muscling his way in. And that's the first lead for Purdue. It looked like a travel, but I don't think it was a travel. I, I, I think the front part of Haas's body went forward in a stutter motion in the backside where his pivot foot was stayed solid. Herter, Jackson, not from three, challenging the big man. He is really, really talented. He is so good, Jackson. But so is this guy. Look how big, look how strong, let's see. Nope, his back foot did not move. It was a little bit of a stutter, but this is nice. Herder with a sweet pass. Jackson too quick. Movie reviews, movie suggestions. You Anything about movies, Adnan's all over. Promise. The cinematography of this film was uh, a little suspect for me, but the acting performances were sublime. Uh, okay, should I see it or not, Adnan? That's all I ask. Adnan, give me two movies. Under four minutes, first half. We got a good one in the Big Ten. That was a lucky bounce, oh. and then Haas had it blocked and blocked again, but a foul. You know, they came with the double. And it's about the fourth time they've doubled Swanigan. And he really has not handled it well. Here comes a double, but he misses the ball. And look at Tchaikovsky. And then the foul was called on the backside. Checo went up. Man. That's a cost. He does have some shooting touch from the free throw line. Swanigan, you heard Lafonso talking about it a minute ago. You've broken down how they've played him in this game. It's not been a huge first half for either of the pretty big men. No, and I, I, look, against Nebraska, Nebraska late in the game, doubled, played him single, but bodied him, and him being Swanigan, and Swanigan did not handle it great. One-point lead for Maryland. Now Trimble against Swanigan. Give it to Jackson right here. You're going to get a bucket. Trimble up top, Tchaikovsky. It's impossible to stop. The only person that stops that middle ball screen is Trimble when he makes a bad read. That's it. That was a good read. Yes. Edwards, shot fake, missed it. Here come the Terps. They haven't had much in transition in this game. and challenging the big men. Well, that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted that switch and they wanted Jackson to go at him. Problem was, Haas was standing right there influencing. Swan again, a quick, immediate double team, but he dribbles around it. The spin move, tough shot, no. And that's exactly what you want from Swan again. Anytime he's going away from the bucket, you've won the possession. It's a foul against Haas. I want to go back to that play you were talking about that is so tough to stop. It is. Look, Swanigan on him. Okay, fine. Guy's helping. But once you leave the big, Mellow Trimble generally throws it right on time and right where it needs to be. Now, he threw one away to die. And early in the Ohio State game, he threw a few away. But more times than not, way more, 80, 90% of the time, that kid is going to make the right play at the second, the split second, the big commits. Five team fouls against Purdue. 
So no bonus situation for the Terps. 150 to go first half. Maryland ball with a fresh shot clock. May I just say that last call on Haas was ridiculous. I don't know how he's supposed to play. He gets banged, he gets bumped, he gets fouled, he gets hit. He touches the guy, it's a foul, I can't stand it. Edwards steal and he goes all the way. Hey, that was strength. He just went between Nickens and between Trimble and laid it in. Big, big four point possession there. Two Maryland didn't get, two Purdue did get. He's already got double figures. Carson Edwards has been fantastic. Trimble, good. They're trying to get and involve Swanigan. They do, and as soon as Swanigan takes a step forward, Trimble reads it and blows by. Over top, nice catch. Over top, Tchaikovsky. Edwards offensive rebound. Here's Thompson open for three. Boy, that is just got Mark Turgeon crazy. The refs number one, Jackson number two. Tchaikovsky was battling. And Jackson ran out. He didn't come back for the rebound. So Turgeon's going to yell at the rest for over the back, and he probably will yell at Jackson for not competing on the backboard. Terps take a timeout. That gives us a chance to remind you this game in the SEC tonight, Saturday, primetime, presented by AT&T, number eight, Kentucky, number 24, Florida. It'll be rocking down in Gainesville, 815 Eastern, streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. No De'Aaron Fox against Georgia went to overtime. De'Aaron Fox supposed to play in this game. Monk, you better guard him late. That's I, just, I would say. That's yeah. just, you know. Maybe the best late clock score in the country, although you can make an argument for this guy. Yes, you can. He had nothing until that back cut. And then, as oft times happens, when something works, Mark Turgeon stays with it. This has been working, whether it's him scoring, him being Trimble, or him finding the next. But the most dangerous play, really, in the Big Ten is the middle ball screen with Melo Trimble. And Purdue has yet to come out with their big and extend it. And I like the way you've described it in the first half. Get those Purdue big guys moving around, make them make choices, make them make decisions, and then let Trimble counterattack. That's exactly. And, and he, you have to do it with good timing. And he literally is always right on time. Sometimes the pass might be sloppy. But he's usually right on time. Went right after Swan again. Ball tipped in. Good with a foul. <laughs> Kids willing to that. Tchaikovsky is willing to that. He is playing hard. And that's the best I've seen him play. Trimble influenced by Swan again. But Tchaikovsky just gets in front of Edwards. Man, this is pretty good. He had, When you compete on the defensive end, Things like this happen for you on the offensive end. Missed the chance for the three-point play. There's a guy who's missed a lot of time this year. Hadn't played much, has been banged up. And he's starting to make an impact. Yeah, and every Sunday, he and Bender cook for their team. So he's a whiz in the kitchen. Defender, getting healthy now. Keep everybody happy. <laughs> yes. Edwards against the big man who blocks it away. This is the best I've seen him play all year. And there is no second so far. Shot clock off, and guess who has the ball? Where do you think he'll go? Down to five. Melo Trimble had it knocked away. Nice play by P.J. Thompson. And that's how the first half comes to an end. That's a heck of a play by P.J. Thompson. Two things. He fought over the screen, and then he got his hands involved. You cannot play Melo Trimble better than that. Well, we figure Wisconsin will have a big say as well, but it could be an enormous 20 minutes to determine the Big Ten champion I just, in 2017. I just think it's, you know, I've been making the case that it's going to be hard for Wisconsin to lose another game. I just think they've been to Minnesota, Indiana. They don't come here. Been to Purdue. Edwards followed his miss, missed it again. It's out of bounds off of Purdue. It's really hard to play Purdue because there's always the big guy on the block. Now, okay, if he doesn't get the ball and Purdue drives it, your big has to come help, which opens up the backside offensive rebound. Purdue's a tough matchup for anybody. Good front running team, Maryland undefeated when leading or tied at the start of the second half. They lead, but just by a bucket. Trimble was tackled. And that works over what? 
500 yards from here at the football stadium. <laughs> Jay Durkin, who had a great recruiting <laughs> class by him. He did. They're pumped about football here. I would tell you the time I threatened D.J. Durkin with a chair, but that's probably for another another occasion. When you two were at uh, Bowling Green. Yeah, he was a grad assistant. They were going to try to throw me in a pool, and I had my nice church clothes on. Herder, Cowan, wide open. No. Jackson got a hand on it, but Purdue's got the ball. Got to make it. That's a shot they've been making. Mostly Jackson. Yeah, foul against Dodd, trying to follow Swan again. It's not a bad foul, though. You you just you have to do everything you can with Swanigan and Haas before they get the ball. If you can just move them off the block by two feet, you've done your job and you've made it far more difficult. But you got to do it early. That's the second foul against Dodd. Uh, we'll monitor that. The fouls can pile up quickly when you're facing the Purdue big guys. They want to get Swanigan another touch. Got that face-up game. That time way too strong. Yeah, look how far he was off the block. You'll, you'll take that every day, every possession. Good screen by Dodd. And now he gets it back from Trimble for the layup. Man, that was just measuring up. Trimble caught the ball. And for you kids out there, catch it, measure it, and then go. Trimble blew by two guys, found Dodd. Trimble's been a good passer today. He's got five assists. Swanigan this time got a lot yeah. closer to the basket. Yeah, that's a problem. That, that is resting on your laurels if you're Dodd, and now Dodd's going to have to come out. You let him that deep, it is over. Go back to a two-point lead. Dodd, the screener again. Tom Green told us he thought Dodd was the best screen and roll big man in the Big Ten. Herter elevates, missed it. Swan again pulls down the rebound. And almost pulled Dodd over, too, run out. Vincent Edwards saved it in. Carson Edwards missed the three. Everybody falling down. Maryland's got the ball. Crossover move, and he switched to the left hand off the glass. Best leader, best closer in college basketball, my opinion. It doesn't matter what he does. You know, everybody says, well, he's got to see the ball go in. He's got to get confident. No, he's just got to arrive on time for the game. Like, he was awful, Dave, in the first half against Ohio State. Awful. As bad as we've seen him play, yeah. ever. And the bench was like, they, they told our friend Molly McGrath, that'd be fine. <laughs> and he was. He was awful early here. He, he really was. He got off to another slow start. Now he's up to eight, still shy of his season average. But against Ohio State, look, the Buckeyes played well. Last two minutes of that game, Mello Trimble did everything. Just took over. Hit the big three, found guys, drove, three-point play. He's been here for three years, and Maryland has been basically the best team in college basketball in close games in those last three years. And he's the common denominator. Again, I, this is the lineup, I think. Haas, the double big man lineup. Nobody went for the basketball. No. They let Swanigan get it. Swanigan got fouled, no dunk. No Turgeon and staff and fans are losing their mind with Tchaikovsky. For some reason, Tchaikovsky thought he was a runner. He wasn't. He, he forgot that he's like a go get the ball guy. Don't be running out. I mean, it was just sitting there for the taking, right next to him. Yes. For a guy who played really well in the first half. So Haas and Swan to get on the floor together. Edwards almost lost it. Haas, that is a nice move. I'm telling you, there's nothing you can do. You take the ball one way, bring it back to Haas. Tchaikovsky was willing. He wasn't backing down, but nothing you can do. You know what the best defense on that possession would have been? Foul. Grabbing the loose ball yes. the play before and not having to play defense. Think about that. A foul and a bucket. Trimble three, no good. He misses. He misses bad. That was off right. It misses to the side a lot with Trimble. There's Haas, almost the same spot. This time he went middle, and Tchaikovsky forced the jump ball. Great defense. You just stay in front, and you hold on for dear life. That's all it is. Watch this. He's going to turn to his right shoulder. Tchaikovsky hanging in there. Now he's holding on so he doesn't get knocked down. Great defense. The junior from Slovakia. Has been injured, but 
has been a real factor when healthy. He's got five blocks in this game. Five. Well, I like what Mark Turge is doing here. He's running Jackson baseline to baseline against Swanigan. Jackson found his fellow freshman. Herbert loves that corner spot. That's his spot. But they give Jackson credit. He started on the right, sprinted to the left, didn't settle for a jumper, found the next. Great move by Mark Turgeon, putting Swanigan in a triangle. These have been the two best three-point shooting teams in the conference. Nobody's shot threes all that well today. Purdue has been deadly close to the basket with those big guys. And you got again, when you let Swanigan in close, it's over. OVA, over. <laughs> OVA. Yes. Jackson with the crossover. Smooth. Bad matchup for Purdue, but I would live with it. I, I would. I, I would live with it because you're going to score easy if you swing the ball, play three out, two in. Used to be called post exchange. A star coming to, into his own for Maryland. A foul against the Terps. Timeout in College Park. Maryland leads by six. I like post defense too. Look, you get Swanigan off the block, even a couple of feet, and you've done your job. Dodd's going to show a hand right there. Make Swanigan shoot overhand, contest the shot, and you're in business. But the next possession, look, if Swanigan has a foot in the lane when he catches a ball, you've got real trouble. All right, back to action. Anthony Cowan with the ball for the Terps. Justin Jackson, by the way, picked up his third personal foul. So he goes to the bench. Still got the two big men out there for Purdue. Herter, three. And seriously, they've got two bigs in there that can't score. There's only three guys on the court for Maryland that can score from anywhere outside of a foot. And he just lifts up 26 feet, drills Herter. What's not to like about this Maryland team? They're good. And I know people are questioning the schedule. Swan again, blocked again. Tchaikovsky's got six of them. Tremble, all the way, no, a foul before the shot. Hey, Tchaikovsky made the block. Nine guys, eight guys, stood around watching. Mello Trimble just beat everybody to the basketball. Tchaikovsky's been great. He's been absolutely great. Watch, don't give, he doesn't give. You get help, gets knocked out. Tchaikovsky comes in, gets the block, and look at Trimble. That was Bender that got knocked out of there. And Tchaikovsky came in and cleaned it up. Trimble, he's got some bounce in his step right now. He got fouled by Edwards. He got, real he got the look. Right now. How about her? One, one real good look in the first half, really. That was it. Second half. Man. Freshman. And, and he, and a freshman with a lot of patience. He doesn't force it. If he doesn't have a good look, he usually doesn't take it. That's a bad pass and a steal. Edwards one on one. Cowan knocked it away. Swanigan hustling down the court. And now Herter with the quick hands. Cowan on the move. Foul. A block against Purdue. All right. This is a great officiated game. This isn't a well-officiated game, and this is improper English, but this is an incredibly great officiated game. They're not anticipating. They're letting guys play. This is tremendous. It's worth pointing out when we see it. Yep. Good job, Terry, Brian, Lewis. Good crew. Anthony Cowan. Comes up short on the first of two free throws. Look at this. Just Cowan not settling, takes it in, and on the move, that's definitely a block. Cowan's tough, man. Cowan is one of those guys that never goes in a straight line. He changes direction, he hesitates, and you have to stay locked in on him at all times. He's not having a huge game today, but Maryland on a run, and they've opened up a 10 point lead. Edwards, no. Herter. And Haas still on the floor. Maryland's got an advantage. Trimble. And that pass, the quick hands of P.J. Thompson. Tchaikovsky. What a Carter! <laughs> this 
is unbelievable. This is so good. Look at Herter right here. He doesn't stand and watch. His teammates in trouble. He sprints by everybody. Never stand when you're playing hoops, ever. Meanwhile, Purdue, danger zone for the Boilermakers. Haas down low, knocked away. And then Brantley whistled for a foul. Yeah, good call, good no call, knocking it away from Haas. But really good call, because Brantley just got a little bit of Edwards, or that was a one on nobody. Instead, foul against Maryland. Dodd back in. Tchaikovsky, he may get a big ovation going to the bench, although nobody realizes he's coming out of the game yet. They're focused on the other end of the court. His, his career high had been three blocks in a game. He's got <laughs> six already in this one. He's been the difference, really. You have to have somebody that guards these bigs, and he's done a tremendous job. Haas muscling his way in. Well, he got close and then just missed the shot. He missed the shot because same thing again. Incredibly physical by Dodd right there. And Haas wasn't able to gather himself in rhythm. And when he doesn't gather, he falls. And when you fall, you shoot left or right. Kevin Herter having a big second half, doing a lot of things well, shooting threes, not that time. That was designed the entire time for Herter to go against Klein. They ran him off the screen and they ran him off a ball screen. Dodd with the block. So one shot blocker goes to the bench, another comes in, Haas. Maryland's got the advantage. Mello Tremble three, no good. Dodd running the floor, missed it. Remember that possession, 12-point game. Chance for this place to explode with a great look from three and a great look from two. That should have been some points for Maryland. No doubt. Instead, Haas on the baseline, nowhere to go with it. Maryland's guarding the three-point line. Well, this is a Purdue team that's been shooting threes as well as anybody. Edwards rejected. Wow. What's gotten into these big guys? It's amazing how basketball, your teammate does something, you want to join the party. Checo, and now Dodd. I got a feeling, this is a good lineup change. I got a feeling Spike Albrecht and Matthias going to hit a couple shots here. It may not be enough. But you get the feelings. Spike Albrecht certainly do. Hasn't shot it well this year. Matthias, no doubt. Shot clock is at four. So Purdue's got to realize that. Klein shoots the three. Tough shot. Good. Yeah, that's a big possession right there. Klein just ran off a little double screen. This is a good lineup here as well. You got three guys in there and a fourth with Edwards that can really shoot. I'm going to go back to the point you made. Maryland on the other end, on this side of the court, had a great chance, didn't score. Then that three. You don't always lose the game in the last seconds. You lose the game on possessions like the one we just saw, if in fact you do lose. Trimble, Herter from that corner spot. He doesn't miss many of those. Now Purdue can shave that lead down a little bit more. Fias finds an opening and hits. Here come the Boilermakers. I'm telling you, this lineup, when Matthias and Spike Albrecht came into the game, they had a look on their face. It was a great substitution because Carson Edwards looked frustrated. P.J. Thompson looked frustrated. It was more of a mental health substitution as much as anything else. Here's Nickens for three. No. Some good looks, but the shot's not going down. And Purdue on the comeback trail. Matthias had it knocked away, though. Good hustle. And a tie-up. Arrow favors the Boilermakers. That's pretty good. Yeah, man. East like Coast, it. we got some Puff Daddy. West Coast, we got a little NWA. Let's do this. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Now, we're, now we're in uncharted waters. Here's a three short. Klein had a pretty good look Klein again. Had a great look. And Cowan, who's just faster than everybody, but he missed the shot. Boy, basket's getting awfully small for the Terrapins. A lot of good looks in these last, say, two minutes. Maryland 8 and 1 in league. Purdue 7 and 3 in league. Matthias, Swanigan for three. In and out. 
And then the ball just fumbled away. Nobody grabbed it, and Vincent Edwards was there. Second time. You're right. How costly. How costly. Look, Purdue's going to scrap. Make no mistake. Nobody over the years has scrapped harder than Purdue. You don't go put your nose in it and go get the ball. There is going to be a boiler that is going to put his nose in it and get the ball. Now another possession. Jackson back in for Maryland. He's got the three fouls. Swanigan against Dodd. With that position, he scores. That's after a loose ball that you don't get. Purdue smart. Goes right in to Swanigan. Again, Dodd relaxed. And you, you play straight up against Swanigan. The ball's going in with him having two feet in the lane. Eight nothing run since the possession for the Terps that we circled where they had two great looks and didn't score. Huge. And since then, they have not scored. Trimble had it poked away from behind. That's another turnover. Mathias, defensive player of the year in the league, making plays. Klein, wide open three, yes. One point game. Guy behind me said the Klein, that's the first shot you made all year. He's not paying attention. That's the second shot he's made in this run. He's been huge. Just amazing how fast a game can change. One play. And look, we don't want to make too much out of it, Dan, but you know, when it happened, you said, let's remember that play, let's circle that one. Wide open three from Mello Trimble. Uh, the place was about to go nuts. And then he misses the shot. Dodd has it, basically where he can dunk it home. Misses a little layup. And since then, they haven't scored Purdue on the 11-0 run. Look, you don't lose games because of the last possession or two. You lose games because at this time of the game, when you have an opportunity to take somebody out and let this building explode, you don't take advantage of it. That comes back to haunt you in hoops. And give Purdue credit. Matt Painter made a lineup change. He got Matthias and Albrecht back in there, kept flying, three shooters. Next thing you know, whap, whap, whap. I mean, the whole place was going nuts. Our buddy SVP is doing jumping jacks courtside, celebrating the, the, the herder dunk, timeout Purdue, come out of the timeout, wide open look, and man, has the game changed. Look at Matthias now on Trimble. He poked it away from last time. Here comes a screen from Dodd. Trimble gets middle and oh, foul. Unbelievable. They had Matthias on him for a ball screen. And from the left side, uh, Edwards Pretty left bad. his man, Edwards, sprinted Edwards, off Edwards, his Edwards, man Edwards, to go double six, Trimble. But Trimble was too good, and he beat everybody to the rim. Watch Edwards. See, Edwards, he came running off his man. His man didn't care. First free throw good from Mello Trimble. Well, he mentioned our friend uh, Scott Van Pelt. Uh, of course, Ford Center at midnight every weeknight. How about SC6 with Michael Smith and Jamel Hill, two of our other friends and colleagues at ESPN. Monday, sort of the rollout, opening night for those two at 6 o'clock Sports Center. They're going to be on every night. It'll be a little different, be fun. Check it out. I like their ads, too. I mean, that they're dancing. I like it. The six. What does that mean? Six o'clock sports center. Oh, all right. It's pretty complicated. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, uncode help, it for you. Help me out. Klein working hard without the ball. Yeah, and they, they wanted that right there. Swanigan with the left hand. Good. Good. Baseline runner. Swanigan kind of set a screen for, Swan, or for Klein, which put Swanigan right at the lane. And then he turned and just dominated Don. I mean, isn't it interesting? It feels like it's been a relatively quiet game for Swanigan. We get almost nine minutes to go. He's got 17 points. And Trimble lost it again. That's the second time that's happened. They're going to call a foul against Maryland. Well, Trimble had absolutely no respect for Swanigan. He was showing the ball right in front of him. And look, Swanigan is not just some big clod. He's a guy that has tremendous hands, great instincts for basketball. Watch Trimble. No respect here. He's going to show it right in front of him. Swanigan knows basketball. He has, he has sense. Yeah, you got to be a little more careful than that. Five assists, but five turnovers. And Trimble is on the bench. Purdue has been playing from behind almost the entire game. They lose it. They had a chance for a basket to go ahead. Yeah, it started with great pressure on the ball from Cowan and then pressure on the wing from Brantley. 
And Matt Painter not happy about that one. Turnovers have been, if Purdue gets in trouble, a lot of times it's when they get sloppy with the ball. They're not great against pressure. They don't have anybody, P.J. Thompson occasionally, they just go whip pressure. It's been more than five minutes since Maryland hit a shot from the field. One dribble, that changes right now. Wow. You, the one dribble was unbelievable because he was going to be swarmed, and you kind of feel like Tchaikovsky will fall down in that situation. But he made a low, great dribble. Lead back to three. And he. Maryland switching. Now you get Edwards on the smaller. Cowan trying to enter it. Fouled from behind. And a timeout on the floor, 7.49 to go. Maryland leads by three. And, you know, Swanigan, only a sophomore, fantastic leader for Purdue because everybody follows his work up. He's at the line. This is the first free throw attempt of the second half for Purdue. Now, this is a team that shoots a lot of free throws. Yeah, it's really odd, you know. You, you see a team that throws a ball inside, inside, inside. It's a testament to what the two bigs, Dodd and have done defensively and the discipline they've had against him. Well, he makes them both. The lead for Maryland is one. It was only a few minutes ago when it looked like this game might turn into a blowout. That was a design play for Tchaikovsky. Now we're lobbing to Checo. Oh my goodness. And we're lobbing a little bit behind, which is so hard for a big guy. Oh man, a star is born. Having the best game of his career, I think. Swan again, three, yes! Oh man, a little screen, he set a back screen, and then he popped out. Nice action to get this tied up. 58-58, he's got 22. 13 of them already in the second half. You're right, we're sitting here talking about the great defense. Got 22 with seven to go. It's a bad triple. possession right here. Yeah. It's a bad possession. Coming to the scorer's table, Cowan just handled it and took it and missed. Yeah, nobody moved. Nobody knew what exactly the other was going to do. Odd lineup for Maryland. Purdue shooting just 39% on the road against a top 20 team, and yet they're tied. That is a foul on the floor. Valley Oaks aren't easy when they're thrown out in front, but watch Jacko gets a back screen. It's behind him right there. And he handles it. Set a little back screen. Tchaikovsky doesn't recognize. Bear get out. That's a 50% three-point shooter with Swanigan. Well, that's the shot that tied it. Now free throws to give Purdue a lead. In the bonus. Dakota Mathias. Front end. With the friendly roll, he earns the second. For a rare moment, it goes silent. This crowd's apprehensive. You can, you can feel it. After the couple of threes went in for Purdue and didn't go in for Maryland, this crowd got a little bit, a little bit shook. So this Purdue team showing a lot of toughness on the road today. There's still six and a half to go. I mean, this is their biggest lead. Two. Trimble with contact, no whistle, more contact. Now the whistle comes. Well, he wasn't giving that up. <laughs> he was not. And he was a little tighter with his dribble. Look, down the stretch is a guard, a, a, a great guard, good guard. You cannot turn the ball over. You have to ensure that you get a good shot. And the other side of it is, if you're a really good guard for Purdue, then you make sure that Swanigan gets first and second look. Then we figure something else out. I mostly heard you with the kids screaming behind <laughs> us. Trimble earns the second himself. Well, the hallmark of this Maryland team the last few years, winning the close games. And they play a ton of close games. And another one here. Haas is going to come in. Been enemy number one for these Maryland students for some reason. They always find a guy. One guy to particularly pick on. Yeah. Last year, Jared Utoff, well, they were relentless on him. And you know, it's a compliment. They don't pick on the walk on for the other team or the guy to play six minutes. Since Purdue 
do is won a game on the road against a ranked opponent. I think he had Swanigan, couldn't find him. Instead, he just takes it close to the rim and misses. Herb's trying to run. Trimble, once again, just was not going to give it up. And he is so good at throwing his body into you. Like, he leads with his body. If the ball's in his left hand, you're going to see it here. It's in his right. Now watch. He leads with his body. See, he throws his head back, and then he actually gets contact the second time. But he's not, he is good at faking, contact, and then making. Faking, getting contact, and then making. Faking the contact or faking a move? Faking, getting contact, then he gets contact, and then he makes. Here's the fake right here. Uh -huh. There's the contact right there, and he's good enough many times to make. He is a good salesman yes. on those kind of he plays is. as well. And he sells he it. And every time he goes to the rim, that entire bench screams for a foul. That's got to be three seconds. The referee's going to call a foul, but he, it, Haas was in there for a long time. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Close. Yeah. Usually give him about four. Still just one and one for Haas. Next foul by the Turks. And Purdue's going to be in the double bonus the rest of the way. He missed it. Trimble one on five. Got fouled again. Well, he recognized that he had just enough room on the baseline, and the big fella Haas just couldn't quite get over there. Well, that does have to be a little frustrating for Matt Painter. And now, is that a technical? Oh, my. And Vincent Edwards is upset at his teammate, not the official. He's very unhappy with Isaac Haas. The personal foul and then the technical foul, unhappy with the whistle. I think he's frustrated. He's been close to the rim, but, you know, they played him very physical. He's a physical guy, but they have matched, they being Maryland, have matched him pound for pound. So, the technical foul on Haas means you shoot the, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, once you get your headset back on, you shoot the technical fouls first, then you shoot the one-on-one? -on -one. Yeah, they're going to shoot the technical first, and you see Haas right there. Clearly unhappy. Romelo Trimble, who rarely misses free throws. That's a break for Purdue. Every point is going to count in this one. It would take an act of God to get me to call technical on a kid under six minutes ago. So the ball knew on the first one that it wasn't it wasn't right. And I like Haas. Which was, shouldn't matter, but he goes out there, he bangs, he bangs, he gets banged on, he bangs on folks. I just you know just what if you left, say the magic word. There is no magic word okay. with me. Right. And he did say it. So this is the front end. And that's the one and one after he made one of two technical free throws. And Melo Trimble is just piling up the points at the line. Everybody's in the double bonus, so we're going to have a lot of free throws down the stretch. He's got their last six, make it their last seven points. What a shock. Late yeah. game, Trimble's taking over. Yeah, he's just, he's just throwing his body into people, going to the line, shoot about 90%. From down two to up five. Vincent Edwards. Reluctant to shoot. Herter almost stole it away. Swan again. Brantley knocked it away. Did it again. But now they call a foul on Brantley. And he's got to be careful. He hopped up. I think just at the last minute got control of himself. He's got to be very, very careful. Brantley was in there fighting like crazy. A switch came. Really nice pass 
from Edwards into Swanigan, but Brantley makes, had some great plays. He stripped once, and right there you can see he's around Swanigan's arm. And that's clearly a foul. First one, no. Second one, yes. This is the foul that Haas was upset about, where he got the technical. I don't blame him. I blame him for getting a technical. You don't ever want to get yourself or your team in that position, but I, I don't blame him. He he gets banged around so much, it's almost impossible for him to play. Biggie Swan again having a big game for Purdue. Mello Trimble taking over for Maryland. Herder. He was thinking about the long three that between was the, the legs. That was the closed gate play that we saw them run against Indiana where Herder hit the winner. Tremble three, and that one you could tell was just too strong. He's running into his shot. You know what I mean by that, Dave? Like he's going, he, he's not taking his time to kind of gather. Yeah, he's just shooting Brantley it off balance. All right, now if you're Jalen Brantley, why do you do that? Because uh, you're still mad about the previous play, which is inexcusable. That's a chance for just two freebies for Purdue. Good free throw shooter to the line. 60 feet away from the basket, committing the foul. DJ Thompson, this is his first try at the line today. I, I love this kid. I, you know, they had a kid named Ronnie Johnson who transferred and said, that, well, you can't go to Purdue because you don't have, you know, they don't let you have your sauce. Okay, well, this kid has enough sauce to go 80 to 13 assist the turnovers and lead a team that I think is a chance to make a big time run in this league and obviously in the tournament. And a tremendous leader here by PJ Thompson. Free throw sauce from Thompson. That's some sauce. Two points, man. It's a two point game. Under five to go. On the road into a big crowd. I'd say it's a lot more than sauce. Cowan came in for Brantley. Green and roll with Trimble. Callan just had to make sure he secured it. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. And try that screen again. Well defended by Swanigan. Again, he showed his hands and kept his feet moving. He didn't get a hand involved. He just showed him, moved, blocked. Flying. Oh, yeah. Swanigan for the tie. Short. Boy, I'll tell you what, that could have been some contact there on the shot. Dodd. After Swanigan made a great pass and cut, really bodied up on Swanigan. Trimble Thompson almost stumbled. Again, late shot clock here. Herter launches short. Great defense, two possessions in a row by Purdue. Absolutely nothing going to the rim, nothing through screens. They tried Herder a lot these last two possessions, nothing there. Cowan went for the steal. Instead, Edwards off the glass, no. Swanigan, what a tap out. Thompson for the lead, wow. yes. What a play by Swanigan, recognizing that he couldn't get the ball, but also recognizing where his teammate was. I told you. He's not just some big body. He's got great basketball instinct. That's a steal. Now Thompson went for it, committed the foul. Mm -hmm. You only go if you're 100% sure. Yeah, you don't go if you're 90% sure. Huge game on both sides. The Boilermakers on the road. Maryland trying to protect their home court down by one. One of my favorite plays of the year that I've seen right here. You're not lying. Biggie, 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 biggie. Can't you see? Sometimes your moves just hypnotize me. Watch this. Whack! He knocks it out. It's a little notorious B.I.G. for you. I didn't know you had that in you. You know I do. I'm telling you, he has real sense, Dave, on how to play. He's not just a guy that's big, strong, going to stay on the block. That, that double-handed tap out was the play of the game, no question. And they did give him credit for a rebound on that play, so he's got another double-double. Nobody in the country more of those than him. Mello Trimble, two more free throws. Maryland back up by one. I go right back to Biggie, figure it out from there. up against Tchaikovsky. Turnaround, tough shot, no good. Tchaikovsky did not let him get into the lane. Great defense right there. 
Terp so good in the close games. With the ball, about two and a half to go. Herber got it back, and then what a look from the freshman. Tchaikovsky fouled. <laughs> he, he just has a sense of in the moment he sees the whole court. And it doesn't have to be a big opening. Herder can find you. He's always in the right spot, too. I mean, he's going to come up with loose balls, and as soon as he got it, uh, I was going to call him small. Biggie Swanigan didn't see Tchaikovsky behind him. Herder did. Six blocks for Ooh. the big man who banked it home. Why not? Why not? <laughs> see, yeah. He, uh, okay, the pressure, the tension of a close game, a huge game. You got to smile after that. <laughs> what else can you do? <laughs> All right, try that again, Michael. A little more conventional. Oh, man. Uh, Point lead, Matthias, a little too strong. Maryland basketball. Mello. You know it. Here he is. Trimble, no. Dodd. New shot clock for Maryland. Yeah, I like the defense. I like the move by Matt Painter putting Matthias on. Trimble. Didn't use the screen that time. Cowan will use it. Well, that's the adjustment. They're pushing him down on the side. For three. No, Dodd got fouled. He got pushed by Swanigan. And Dodd has been a force to Kowski. First time he got the rebound. Next time he got held down as, to, as Dodd was out maneuvering Swanigan to go get the rebound. Now let's see this free throw adventure. I mean, they, uh, they can be an adventure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you call that on Swanigan. Both officials had it, but I, I don't know how you do that. His fourth. That's huge. I mean, this is a game. Overtime is definitely a possibility. Yeah, their arms are going to be interlocked, but okay, who, whose fault is that? I mean, I mean, it, it, they, they don't have any definitive way of knowing. And one of two. With those two guys going three or four under two minutes, you'll live with that, obviously, if you're married. Swanigan for three. Yes! Man! Set a screen, pop back. Dodd couldn't play both. He couldn't help on the screen and get back to Swanigan. And man, did he set himself to load up on that three. You know, you just got to switch it if you're if you're uh, Maryland. Forget about worrying about Swanigan at 25. Take away the three, or at, at 19, 20 feet. Take away the three. Man, nice play call, Purdue. Because he hits him, and he's been carrying the Boilermakers. He is locked in. He is locked in on his threes. He's locked in offensively. I mean, this kid, look, they played great defense against him. Dodd and Tchaikovsky have taken turns battling the heck out of him. But, hey, he just keeps going. And this is a great play. Double hand tap out for a three, which tied the game. He is not just a big guy. He is a big guy with skill, and he's a big guy with savvy. Double Double Express keeping Purdue on the rails. I mean, this guy is so good. 26 and 10. And all the subtle plays that you yes. pointed out where it's not just brute power. He is a basketball player. No, he is. And, and he's talking to his teammates. And when he talks, people are going to listen again. He, everybody around the state of Indiana knew he was much more than just a big kid. Terps at home trying to close it out, leading by one. Shot clock already down to 10, out of the timeout. Trimble stripped away by Matthias, got it back and draws the foul. You can't guard him any better. You, you just cannot guard a guy any better than Dakota Matthias guarded Mello Trimble. 
it's not on Matthias. Gets who it's on. Biggie. He can't believe it. Feet, moving his feet, strips, ball loose, just, just a bad spot. That's all it was. Just he, 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 you're, you're in a bad spot. He saw the ball. He reached. He wanted a jump ball. Yeah, I, you can see why he's upset. It's really just bad luck. Yeah, but I think it was a foul. Yeah, I do too. But he was just in a bad spot with his arm and bad luck, no question. So Mello Trimble, who's 12 of 13 at the line. Swanigan waited to sit down. He knows the fans are going <laughs> to yell at him when he does. Right when Trimble was ready to shoot the free throw, they kept quiet. And he just makes them late game. He makes them. He hit the net. Those were so cool. Now if the ball goes inside, you cannot go in and double hosh. You've got to stay with shooters at four spots. Painter. I don't think he loved the way that offensive possession was unfolding. No, he didn't like it at all. No move. So timeout, Boilermakers. We get a chance to check back in studio with that day. Singing Notorious B.I.G. You got the pinstripes. Yeah. It's a fashion critique show back there in studio. <laughs> Are they talking any hoops? <laughs> hey, I'm not mad about it. No. Leon Taylor and Company, baby. Indianapolis hooked me up with the stripes. Three-point game. Purdue ball, 16 to shoot. Double bonus for everybody. The arrow favors the Terps. You have to get above the shooters. You cannot against Purdue because they're such a good screening team. You can't react. you got to be proactive here defensively. Swanigan has fouled out. Purdue's the second-best three-point shooting team in the country. Now a foul away from the ball. And nobody could hear the whistle at first. It's so loud. That's going to put Purdue at the free throw line. I think Haas is a shooter. Jackson called for his fourth personal. That's not been a great game for Isaac Haas, but two huge free throws here. Now, there's only an eight second difference. Game clock, shot clock. Is that enough for Purdue to just play straight up defense? Absolutely. A a absolutely, because the eight seconds now, you know, the eight, even with a make. Let's, you know, you play it out on the other end. Even with the make, it's only a three-point game. You've got to play it out. There's no need to foul. They made them both. Those were big. Maryland's gotten almost everything at the free throw line. Look at that. Not a shot from the field in seven minutes. There's about a seven and a half second difference. Game clock, shot clock. The only question Mark Turgeon has is are they going to bring a ball screener? They are, and it's going to be Haas. Trimble, short, had a great look. Purdue has a chance to win it. And Matt Painter wants a timeout as Edwards was on the attack. No basket, timeout Purdue. Man, that was, a, I don't know about that timeout. It was a nice spin dribble. And Carson Edwards was going to go down the lane with a shooter wide open in the right side. Klein goes to the other side. You see the two guys set up for a possible double screen. So here we go, 6.5. The freshman Edwards to the basket. Edwards rejected, but a foul. With 2.1 on the clock, free throws for Carson Edwards. You know, I thought Purdue, or excuse me, Maryland's help from Dodd was in great shape. But from behind, watch this, Jackson showing, Dodd slid over. And right there, Jackson came from behind. That is his fifth foul, so he's gone. 
I'm with you. I don't think they needed it. No. I do not think he was going to make that shot against Dodd. Oh, and that's what I was talking about before the play. You, you, you reach down and you bail a guy out. Hey, if he makes it, then he's making it over six foot ten. Off balance, flying out of bounds. So now, with Kansas and Iowa State to follow us, if Edwards, the freshman, makes both of them, Purdue leads. And you got 2.1 seconds. Maryland does have one timeout remaining. Boilermakers are out of timeouts. I would imagine Carson Edwards tough enough to make this. Just a freshman, though. That's the tie. I'm telling you, tough kid. He's going to be a big day. He already is a really good player. Now Mark Turgeon, and this is interesting, before the free throw, will use his final timeout to talk strategy. Well, there was a little bit of a timeout because of the foul out. Now what Mark is saying is, look, on the miss, he's getting guys to the sideline. Or he's going to try to get somebody running down the middle. But if they miss, you want to get the ball headed this direction because if you outlet it quickly, you can get a shot from just beyond the top of the key and a good look. On the make, excuse me, on the make, he may want to do the same thing. You can get the ball into the middle of the floor and break a guy down either side and see if you can kick it ahead. Middle to side shot and take your chances. I mean, I do like the quick sort of thinking uh, this is such a big game in this conference. Maryland 8 1, Wisconsin 8 1, Purdue trying to beat a team ahead of them in the standings on the road. I do like that sort of uh, quick rule. Two seconds, you get time for two dribbles before a shot. Yeah, as long as you get the ball going towards the basket. And, you know, athletes these days can get the ball down the floor in less than five seconds. So you can get the ball without question on a decent outlet pass between the M and the top of the key and get a decent look. I think Herter is your inbounder if the free throw goes Her through. Herter has always been their inbounder. But this one is for the lead for Purdue. The freshman made them both. 2.1 seconds now Purdue wants to substitute and get the defense organized. Exactly right. They're substituting. They're getting the defense. Look for Dodd to come up or maybe it's uh, – Nickens to come up and get the ball in the middle if they can. Herter with Vincent Edwards on top of him. Herter all the way He's down not. the court, and it's intercepted by Haas. And that's going to go. Wait a minute. Oh, no. He traveled. Yes, he, he did. Yes, he did. He traveled. He just started walking with the ball. Now so you're going to have to go see how much time. Yeah, that will be huge. I mean, this will be critical. But it saves a chance for the Terps. The game was over if Haas just stands there. Now what? He just, he assumes it's over, and he starts to walk. Well, the ref doesn't call it until the game has ended. Now that's, all right, so that's, because that's really the key. When does the whistle blow? The whistle does not blow until it's zero on the clock. Catch. One with a pivot. Watch his right foot. There's your travel, two tenths if they're going to get made. I mean, I think if you're being really precise, you could have with a half second, but I, but the whistle didn't blow then. It didn't. Well, this is the chance for Maryland to have a last second prayer. The game was over. Put the ball in your stomach until you hear the horn. There's that foot up, but when does the whistle blow? You know, and it is. So the officials now, and they are. They're going to put a full half second, which is enough time for a shot. No question. And I'm looking at Herder. I'm looking at Herder off of a double screen. Purdue's going to switch everything, maybe put Haas on the ball. Herter's got almost unlimited range. He can shoot from anywhere. And as does Trimble. What you have to do here if you're Maryland, you know that shot where guys just turn, fire, drop their hands, kick their legs out? You don't need that here. 
You need to catch, shoot. You don't need to throw. You can catch and shoot here. So because of that mistake, the game was over. A half a second still for Maryland to get a look. And if a shot goes in, no matter from where, Maryland wins. Now they're inbounding from under the basket. Now watch Mello starting away, slipping the screen. Uh, Matt Painter wants to know why it's not on the side. At the basket, you, you might you maybe throw it up toward the rim and try to tip it in. That'll be a little difficult with Haas, Haas, who's right there. Yeah, they're saying it was inside the arc, so then the ball goes out of bounds. I kind of thought it was outside the arc, I so the ball be at half court. Point five on the clock. No timeouts on either side. Nickens is the passer. Now they got to go. Herder. Herder for the win. No. No, and Purdue on the road. What a win for the Boilermakers. And the happiest man in America right now is Isaac Haas because the miss bailed him out. Out of his hand, I thought it had a great chance it, to go in. What an out-of-bounds play by Mark Turch. Absolutely. He ran a couple of doubles. The second guy in the double was Herder. He got a great look. Cowan first, Trimble second. They pinned in. Great look. Just off. So Maryland in control of this game almost the whole way, and Purdue just kept fighting, and even with their star on the bench with five fouls, the Boilermakers figure out a way to get it done. How now. about the freshman, Carson Edwards, stepping up into the wall right there and drilling two free throws. Made them both for the win.